Hello, wonderful parents. I'm Dr. G, your friendly go-to board certified pediatrician and mom who's been through the teething trenches. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving deeper into the world of baby teeth, the drooling, the distress, and the undeniable cuteness of that first toothy grin. Yes, we're talking about teething. Let's get started. understand teething. Teething, it's one of those words that can really cause even the most seasoned parents to break out in a cold sweat. But what exactly is it? Teething is the process of baby teeth breaking through the gums. It's usually starting around six months of age, but every baby is different. Some start as early as three months, others as late as a year. The lower front teeth usually show up first, but that's not always the case. Next, signs and symptoms. So, how can you tell if your little one is starting their teething journey? It can sometimes be challenging as a parent to figure it out. So here are some signs and symptoms to look for. So the first one is drooling. One of the most telltale symptoms is an increase in drooling. Yes, I know, babies are already a little bit of drool machines, but when teething comes into play, the drool factor can ramp up significantly. This is a natural reaction to teething. And while it may mean more bib changes and laundry for you, it's a completely normal part of the process. Chewing. Another hallmark of teething is your little one turning into a mini chewing machine gnawing and biting on just about anything within reach. Maybe if their favorite teether, toys, and yes, even your unsuspecting fingers. You see, when those little teeth are pushing up, it causes discomfort and pressure in the gums. Imagine having an annoying itch that you can't quite reach. It's frustrating, right? That's what your baby is feeling, but in their gums. When they chew or bite on something, it puts counter pressure on the gums, which can alleviate that discomfort. It's like their own little way of scratching that itch. Changes in baseline behavior. Teething can also bring about a trifecta of troubles. Fussiness, sleep disruptions, and decreased appetite. How are those linked to emerging teeth, you might ask? Well, consider the discomfort that your little one is experiencing as those new tooth make their way to the surface. It's like having a headache that won't go away. It probably make you feel grumpy too, right? That's what your baby is experiencing, but in their gums. Their usual cheerful demeanor might be replaced with bouts of fussiness or irritability, changes in their sleep habits, and decreased sleep. These changes are generally a normal part of the teething process and should resolve as each tooth breaks through the gum line. However, and you know what I'm going to say, if you notice extreme changes in your baby's behavior or eating habits, it's always a safe bet to reach out to your child's pediatrician. Another one is rubbing on their ears. It's an intriguing behavior you might notice your little one doing is tugging on their ears or rubbing their cheeks or chin. It might seem puzzling at first. What do ears have to do with teeth, right? The answer lies in something called referred pain. Referred pain is a fascinating and sometimes confusing phenomenon where pain is felt at a location other than where the source of pain is. In the case of teething, the nerves in the gums are closely connected to the other ears of the face and head, including the ears and cheeks. So as those teeny, tiny little teeth are pushing through the gums, the discomfort can travel along these nerve pathways and manifest as an earache or cheek pain. Hence, your baby might tug on their ear or rub their cheek or chin in an attempt to soothe this discomfort. 
Remember though, ear pulling can also be a sign of an ear infection, especially if it's accompanied by a fever or runny nose. So if your baby is tugging at their ears and showing signs of illness, it's time to check with your pediatrician or if you're just worried or confused, just go have them seen anyway. So let's discuss some common misconceptions. We're gonna shift gears and a little detour into myth busting territory. I'm sure everyone's well-meaning neighbor, mother-in-law or auntie has given advice on teething. Am I right? <laughs> yes. One such popular belief is that teething can cause a fever. But here's the reality check. While it's possible for your baby to have a slightly elevated body temperature during teething, a true fever, that is a body temperature over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius, is not a normal part of teething and should be considered a sign of illness. Similarly, some people claim that teething can cause diarrhea. The thought behind this is that babies tend to swallow more saliva when they're teething, which could in theory speed up the transit of food through their gut. However, while it's true that increased saliva swallowing might lead to slightly looser stools, full-blown diarrhea is not a typical teething symptom. If your baby has multiple runny watery stools in a day, it's likely due to an infection, not their emerging teeth. I know there's a lot of aunties out there that's mad at me, but let's move on. Another myth I often hear is that teething can cause a runny nose. Although it's easy to see how this connection could be made, after all, both tend to happen frequently in infancy, there's really no scientific evidence to support this. A runny nose is usually a sign of a cold, allergies, or other illnesses, and should not be chalked up just to teething. The bottom line is this, while teething can certainly make your baby uncomfortable, it shouldn't make them truly sick. So if your little one has a high fever, diarrhea, a runny nose, or other symptoms that concern you, don't let the it's just teething theory stop you from getting in touch with your child's pediatrician. Trust your instincts. You know your baby best and remember, when in doubt, always consult with a healthcare professional. And now, let's move on to discuss what you've all been eagerly waiting for, the soothing solutions, the ways you can provide some much needed relief to your little one during this teething stage. First and foremost, a teething toy can be an excellent tool. These come in many shapes and sizes, from simple rings to intricate little animal shapes, and are designed to be safe and satisfying for babies to chew on. Chilling these teethers in the refrigerator can provide an extra level of relief. The cool sensation can help numb the gums and reduce inflammation. However, it's important not to freeze them. This can make them too hard and potentially harm your little baby's delicate gums. A damp washcloth can be a great DIY teether. Simply wet the washcloth, wring it out, and cool it in the fridge. The textured fabric is great for your baby's gums and the cool temperature provides the same benefits as a chilled teether. Another simple yet effective method is to gently massage your baby's gums. This might sound surprising, but applying light pressure to the gums can actually help counteract the pressure from the tooth, pushing on through, which provides some relief. I recommend wrapping your finger in a cool, clean washcloth and gently rubbing back and forth over the gums. If your baby is still finding it hard to settle, distraction can be a fantastic tool. Engage them with a new toy or a favorite game, shower them with some extra cuddles, or even a good old session of peekaboo. Anything that helps shift their focus away from the discomfort can be a big help. And I know, 
for those really tough nights, a pain reliever like acetaminophen might be helpful, but should only use sparingly and under your pediatrician's advice. And remember, no aspirin for babies. Aspirin can cause serious health problems in our little ones. When in doubt, don't hesitate to reach out to your child's pediatrician. Always. And lastly, Keep in mind that every baby is different. What works wonders for one may not work for another. It may take some trial and error to find what works best for your child, so be patient. Keep trying different methods, and remember, this stage won't last forever. I would not be being a great Dr. Judy, you guys, if I didn't include some teething remedies to avoid. When it comes to addressing teething discomfort, you'll find an abundance of products promising relief. However, it's important to note that some remedies should be avoiding. Teething tablets and gels, for example, can be harmful. The FDA has issued warnings about certain brands because they've been found to contain belladonna, a poisonous plant, and benzocaine, a local anesthetic that can cause a rare but serious condition called methoglobinemia. That's a mouthful, I know. And what about those trendy little amber teething necklaces? <laughs> Well, they pose a choking and strangulation risk, and there's no scientific evidence to support their ethicness, effectiveness. Well, there you have it, parents. The lowdown on teething troubles. Remember, this is normal, albeit challenging, part of your baby's development, and it won't last forever. Just think of that adorable toothy grin waiting at the end of this journey. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your fellow parents, and subscribe for more pediatric pearls of wisdom. Leave any questions or topic requests in the comments, and I'll do my best to address them in future videos. Until next time, keep smiling, and remember that you're doing an amazing job. Bye!